Do you want to play a game? Be food and drink and ghosts. And perhaps even a few murders. You're all invited. Hello, welcome to Cheers to Fears, where we take alcohol and horror movies and pair them together for your entertainment. We're your two hosts. I'm Tucker. And I'm Alex. Today we are going to be making a drinking game for Get Out, directed and written by Jordan Peele. Peele started his career out as a comedic actor, mostly known for his work with Keegan-Michael Key as they worked together on the shows Key and Peele and Mad TV. As time passed, Peele announced that he was going to be directing horror movies, starting with his directorial debut, Get Out. To say that the film did well would be an understatement, as it has become one of the most successful horror movies in the 2010s, thanks to Peele's superb script writing as it presents a unique take on racism in America. Speaking of Jordan Peele, actually, we do have drinks based on one of his movies, this one being Nope. If you'd like to know how to make it, just click on the link above. It's damn tasty, I'll tell you right now. Just a bit of a warning, there will be mild spoilers, but nothing that would really take away from the movie. It just might be in some of the rules. Anyways, without further ado, let's move on to the rules. The first rule for this drinking game is death. Whenever somebody dies, you take a sip. And this came to a total of seven for Get Out. Yeah, I think that's maybe a little bit higher than usual for death, but it's pretty average number, maybe. Depends on the genre of horror, I guess. That's true. (laughs) Slashers would be higher. Anyways, moving on to rule number two, we got screams, cries, and yells. And this is an abysmal seven sips for this rule. Yeah, this is way lower than... <laughs> way lower. Yeah. Usually this is double digits, mm-hmm. 100%. It's at least double digits. I think generally it's around like high teens, like 17 or so, give or take. Yeah, maybe even in the 20s on average, honestly. Mm-hmm. Moving on to rule number three is whenever Chris is on his phone, you take a sip. And this came to, yet again, seven sips. Yeah, another rule with seven sips. I wonder if it's going to be a theme throughout the rest of them. (laughs) Hopefully not, because that would make for a relatively low drinking total. (laughs) Absolutely. Anyways, moving on to rule number four. It's whenever Chris is put in an awkward situation. And this is our highest total, giving us 16 sips. Yeah, 16 sips is actually pretty low for a total. (laughs) I I mean, with it being the highest, yeah. yeah. For the highest, rather, to clarify. However, let's go on to the next rule, which is whatever hypnosis is mentioned or perform, that's a sip. And that came to a total of six for this drinking game. Yeah, and it's, uh, I'd say, a central piece of the plot, I guess. Mm-hmm. That's why we included it as a rule. It's it's just a major piece of the puzzle for the whole <laughs> plot, really. Yeah. Now let's move on to rule number six. It's whenever the maid appears, and this gave us ten sips. I guess she is kind of important to the plot, considering the mannerisms that she does have. They're a little bit off kilter. But Mm -hmm. anyways, let's move on to the next rule. And that's whenever skin color is brought up. And that came to a total of 11 sips. Yeah, another double digit rule. Uh, It seems like some we're getting some more double digits going on now to give us a few more drinks, at least. Yeah, this is the only one that's kind of paired with whenever Chris is put into an awkward situation. Just to clarify that. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of the biggest themes of the movie, I guess, Mm -hmm. is racism in america is the overall generic theme i guess and this is obviously why we included it yeah anyways moving on to rule number eight it's whenever chris is taking pictures or photography is just mentioned and this only happened five times in the movie Mm -hmm. it's never really talked about too too much but it's seen a little bit and i guess mild spoiler warning like we said the flash is important Mm -hmm. flashes are important for which is why we included it as a rule yeah Let's move on to rule number nine, which is whenever smoking is brought up. And that came to a total of five sips. Yeah, and this kind of a little bit goes hand in hand with the hypnosis. He talks about smoking and how he Mm -hmm. wants to get hypnotized to stop smoking and he's trying to quit, blah, blah, blah. It's just a minor plot point and I think it's a reason for the hypnosis to even be included. Yeah. Well, anyways, on to the last rule of this drinking game. It is whenever the sunken place is seen or brought up and this gave us four sips. Yeah, I'm surprised this total is actually so low, especially like we were hoping things would pick up. Definitely did not at all. Sunken no. Place, I thought would be a little bit more too, but I guess it's more towards the middle end of movie. Yeah, I thought it would be used more as well. And I think the reason I thought that is just because of like how impactful it is and unique it is and memorable the Sunken Place is. So I guess I remembered there being a lot more instances of it, but it's just because... You see it so few times, but it's just very impactful every time you see it. Mm -hmm. And 
it's so recognizable, which is why we had to include it. Oh, yeah, great cinematography. Oh, yeah. And that comes to the drinking totals. The total for this movie comes to 78 sips, which is two and a half drinks based on our 30 sip per can scale. And honestly, that is one of the lowest we probably have on the channel. I think it might be the lowest, if I remember correctly. I mean, we've been gone for almost six months, but I really think it's the lowest. I've never heard of one being that low. Mm -hmm. And I mean... It's just the way it played out. Nothing happened an extreme amount of times other than Chris maybe put in awkward situations. Mm -hmm. That happened 16 times. And, like, it's overall just an easy drinking game. And, honestly, pair it with another movie. Maybe watch this and Us together, Mm -hmm. for example. Another one of Jordan Peele's movies. Yeah, we'll see how we do uh, with that on tomorrow's video. Yeah. But it reminds me of some other movies I was kind of slow-paced. Like, I think A Quiet Place was or Psycho. Psycho was low. I think... Quiet Place was like 90-something. Psycho may be the same. Mm -hmm. Um, But for the most part, yeah, I don't think we've had any in the 70s, which is shocking. Mm -hmm. But honestly, in this case, it might be good that you're not drinking too frequently because it allows you to stay invested in the movie and pay attention to some of the unique themes and aspects going on because there is quite a serious social commentary, I guess, Mm -hmm. in the movie as well. Yeah. So... It doesn't completely take you out of the movie only watching for when these instances happen. It allows you to, I guess, take in the movie a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. I'd say this is one of the movies that you should watch with a sober mind because then you can really understand its themes, plot, and everything. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, with all that being said, we hope you enjoyed our drinking game for Get Out. If you end up playing the game alongside the movie, or if you have any feedback or suggestions, let us know in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the next episode, which we are going to be making a drinking game for Jordan Peele's Us, hopefully released tomorrow. We will also be releasing an episode for Nope following that. Thanks for tuning in, and this is us saying cheers cheers to fears. fears.